the original Martin Luther. Okay, not Dr. King, but Martin Luther once spent three days in a dark depression over something that had gone wrong. And on the third day, Katie, his wife, came downstairs dressed in mourning clothes and said, and he said, who's dead? And she replied, God. Luther rebuked her saying, what do you mean God is dead? God cannot die. Well, she replied, the way you've been acting, I was sure God had. <laughs> Old joke. Martin <laughs> Luther, 1400 or something. In John's telling of the Easter story, it's Mary Magdalene who comes to the tomb first in the early morning, thinking that Jesus is dead. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary of Magdala went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. And so she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved. I'll stop there for a minute. My professor of John said that he thought that disciple was Lazarus. So if you can put Lazarus days after he was raised at the tomb with Jesus, think about how exciting that could be. Wow. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. It's interesting that Mary Magdalene should be the first to discover the empty tomb. We've heard so much about her since the Da Vinci Code. And we think we know her, and actually we know very little. What we think we know is mostly conjecture and legend. Newsweek magazine did a story about her, a major story about her, and called her an inconvenient woman because she was at the center of so much controversy, and yet so little is actually known about her. One tradition says she was a prostitute. But nowhere in the gospel does it say that. Doesn't say anything about that. The Eastern Orthodox Church, which makes more of her than most Protestant churches do, says that she was so virtuous that God intended for her to be the mother of the infant Jesus. And to prevent that, the devil sent seven demons to torment her. All the New Testament really tells us is that Mary entered Jesus' ministry as he preached in Galilee, that she was possessed of seven demons, but was no more, of course, and wait a minute. I lost myself. She was possessed of seven demon, demons, and that she announced the resurrection. Seven demons is important. Seven. Seven is the number of completion. She was completely insane. She was completely destroyed by the demons. This is a way of saying at one point in her life she was completely and hopelessly as evil as one could imagine. She was so corrupt, so irrational, that she must have been driven by a demon. No, by a whole cohort of demons. Then one day, she met a man called Jesus. Perhaps to her astonishment, he neither condemned her nor sought to exploit her. A miracle happened, probably the greatest miracle of all. She became a new person a person of peace and transforming love. Now, if you've read or seen the Da Vinci Code, you know that the plot revolves around the idea that the early church sought to suppress the fact that Mary Magdalene was married to Jesus and that she had a child by him. There are manuscripts from, the, from as early as the second century 
that showed that Magdalene was closer to Jesus than all the other disciples. One of them says he used to kiss her on the lips. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? That, and that's a real manuscript. That, that's a, a real second century manuscript. She was a leader of the early church, but she was shunted aside because she was a woman. Mary Magdalene loved Jesus. That we do know. As Jesus hangs in agony on the cross, his life ebbing away, Magdalene is there beside his mother, keeping watch. Crucifixion is slow, brutal, and bloody, but still she stays. And finally the hour comes and Jesus says, it is finished. His body is bound in linen, carried to a garden, and buried in a tomb. Before dawn, it's Mary who rises to anoint Christ's body. The grave is empty. Terrified and confused, she races to tell Peter and the other disciple. Peter, can we say Lazarus? Run to the tomb, enter and find the empty grave clothes and the napkin which had covered his head neatly folded on the bench. In wealthy families in Bible times, when the servants set the table for dinner, the servant made sure that things were exactly as the master wanted them. The table was furnished with simple bowls and cups. But there was a linen cloth at the side of each plate, neatly folded. And then the servant would get out of sight until the master needed it. The servant would wait until the master finished. If the master was done eating, he would rise, wipe his lips and his hands on the napkin and toss it on the table. The servant would then know that it was time to clear the table. The wadded up napkin meant, I'm finished. But if the master got up from the table and folded his napkin and laid it beside his plate, the servant knew that the folded napkin meant, I'm not finished yet. The folded napkin meant, I'm coming back. Lazarus may have known what that meant when he saw the folded napkin and knew that Jesus was coming back. The disciples leave. Mary stays in the garden. A voice asks, why are you crying? But she doesn't recognize the questioner. And finally, Jesus says her name, Mary. And she cries out in Aramaic, Rabboni, simply means rabbi, my teacher. Magdalene goes to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. 